So it's a matter to the other creatures which are in the universe. So we are part of a, a, a chain of events. Yeah, but in a way, this is the most beautiful invention ever for mankind. Is this a beautiful invention for mankind? Depends how mankind uses it. It's very much, it's a sword which cuts both ways. As I explained to you, I can use a magnetic field to travel to deep space in minutes, or I can use the same magnetic field to commit the most horrendous crime, which is dilute your body within the field. As I said to the National Security Officers of Belgium some time ago, with the present guns, because they, in the talk they were carrying revolvers when we were talking. I said to them, at the present when you shoot somebody with a revolver or a gun, there is a body. You can relate to who shot who. With this technology, when you release the magnetic field of the principle, hitting a matter, is what I said to you about the earth hitting the sun, there will be nothing left of you to know who was there. How are we going to use this? Into what advantage and to what, who, whose advantage? And who can control who? Or, as the knowledge has been well published and released within the public, if you have an internet, you can educate yourself, but if you understand it, you can build the systems, is that nobody can abuse nobody anymore. And no nation can run another nation for raw material. Because with this technology, I've done it before. You can make as much as any raw material as you like. Because everything is within the hand of the system and capability of the system to do. Very recently, we had a discussion, we're still discussing, with people in Saudi Arabia. If they listen to this interview, they know who they are. In Saudi Arabia, there is a huge problem with drinking water. So they have what they call desalination units, which is they clean the water from the sea, they take the salt away. And in places like Jeddah or in the inner cities within the country, they go for a deep water. Deep water is getting to a point of they're going deeper, and it's happening in Texas as well. In Texas, they've taken their, their water, but it's going lower because they use all the water they could get to, and they're going lower and lower. Understand? exactly how the energy is produced in this system. This is what I said using the principal matter to matter level. We can create a lot of free or what we call available energy. If you've done your work in a school, in a chemistry lab, when you boil water, when it cools down, it becomes water, liquid. And that's what it is, evaporation. You evaporate it, you distill it. That's how they make alcohol. In our systems, we can create enough energy to create a cold condition compared to its environment that the moisture within the air becomes liquid water. So in reality, we don't need to wait anymore for the clouds to rain to go in the ground and go under the ground for us to be able to have drinking water. We create a drinking water from the environment which we live in. And that's the beauty of it, which means there is no more pressure on man in deserts to be dying of thirst. You give a system and the system can create as much water as you like from the moisture within the air of the atmosphere. The driest space in the, on Earth carries 15% moisture of water. In European countries we are over 50%. So if you can extract or suck in, let's say, one ton, of air, you can get at least 100, 200, 300 liters of water out of it. So, in a way, we should not see the disasters of Africa at the moment, which are thousands who are dying of without, because of droughts. Cash Foundation is running a trial called the Seed Experiment. We have tested it in seven countries at the moment running, where we coat the seed with the structure of the same material as our reactor, but in a nano state, where the seed is taking moisture from air and is growing as one of the people who run the experiment. It's a wild grow. He was away from home. So he, we asked what's the condition with your, what's the seeds around you is running in the United States. And he said, they're growing like wild. I had to call my wife and my wife says, these are growing like wild things. So 
we see the whole application of the technology. There should be no need for anybody to die of hunger. We have run tests in Belgium, especially like the woman I told you within, she's been in bed for five years and now she starts sitting on the bed. She, the carers who look after her from whole day while the husband is away from eight o'clock till four o'clock in the afternoon, they say she does not eat, she used to eat a lot. No, she's very little. I said, yes, because most of the energy she needs are within the cups which we feed her. And the body is taking what they need, so she doesn't need to consume anymore. So the same principle applies to this water. We can put what man needs within the structure of the water, the way we help people to reprocess their body, to feed them. So in Africa, when you get a moisture, when there's a drought, you get the moisture, you change it to water, you can add within the same process what energy the man needs to eat, so the water becomes the feeding process. So nobody needs to die of hunger and nobody needs to die of a drought and there is no need for collapse of the um, chain food supply. These are the changes to come and this is, it, it will become a shock but once the shock settles in and people start producing the same thing, the same process, the abuses of the past will change at the same time man will take what he needs. The way we are abusing our environment will come to an end. We were talking about the creation. Uh, if people understand the concept of gravitational field and magnetic field, people will come to understand how closely we are related to each other as a human being and how we live on each other's for even survival. What you breathe, I breathe, what I, uh, what I breathe out, you breathe in. You take part of my energy, you take part of my cell, you take part of uh, the energy, the magnetic fields which are in move from me. So in a way, as a human being, we all need each other to survive. And in the Keshe Foundation, we talk about uh, capturing this energy in the space, that we don't need any food. When we proposed this, they said this is a crazy thing. So, um, in one of the interviews and one of the experimental lab experiments, one of the journalists said, okay, can you then, when he saw the production of CO2 from fresh air, we literally take CO2 from air and we, we produce a solid CO2. And we showed him how it can be done. While they were running the lab, the engineers were running the test. He said, can you make a torch which can run on water? Then nowhere in the universe we need any more batteries. We can't rely on the batteries. Uh, a few days later, I called him and I said, uh, I've made a torch which works out of the magnetic field of the universe. You don't need the water. Anywhere in the universe, you can absorb the smallest magnetic field, the smallest radiation, convert it into light, and you know the way the light comes in, and it comes absorbed by different animals, it becomes grass and minerals or vitamins, and we eat it. So I give you the light. Then you can decide what you want to make out of the light. And in a way, instead of making a torch which works out of the water, with water, we developed a technology where exactly what I told you. In deep space, we need to absorb the smallest amount of energy in fragments, store it here in a capacitor, and in a very simple way. This could be, in a way, this light, ray of light, is part of the energy between us which is sitting in this room. So, the advancement is very much on the line of understanding how creation is and where we come to end up as a creation. So, this system has no battery, it's been running for nearly over two years now. We have run it, we can run it for months and months, we've done it, we got fed up, we switched up because we wanted to show people what it is. And it has no battery, it's literally a hollow system. But the structure, the way we explain of magnetic field and gravitational field, understood, so we can repeat this. We've got two or three torches like this running at the moment. Just to show, in space, we do not need to take even anything with us, except absor even absorbing what is in the space to create as much food and energy in the space without relying on the mother planet Earth. So this brings us back to another position, and that is, What's the purpose of our creation? Why are we being created? 
and this I have explained in a book <coughs> to be published late this year or beginning of next year is called Universal Order of Creation and in this book I explain how creation is done, how we are created and how our creation ends up with the existence of the soul and the soul of the man or the soul of anything as long as you have a combination of magnetic fields which they can make a decision about the existence of the matters and the fields within them you have a right of intelligence you can think you can decide it does not need the physical body the way we are used to to hands and arms and legs in a way if you can communicate like the cells do you don't actually need arms and legs you need energy to survive of water you create the magnetic field of the water within your body so you absorb the amount of moisture you need this is what our systems do it's the same way it goes with how the body will interact how the beings will interact in the future with what is another levels of non-tangible lives within the universe we are used to tangibility then we can confirm its existence as one guy said to me when the news in CNN I believe it so uh, in the space there are no CNN so we have to see and when we come across intelligence of a, a non-physical way but they can still interact with us these are the consequence of interaction of the fields which leads to creation of an atom which leads to creation of the cell which leads to creation of intelligence so in so many ways we are not the only ones we cannot be the only ones because once you understand the structure of the universe we are part of a bigger structure and even in the book which is getting published very soon in September of 2011 called the uh, creation of universe in this book I explain even this universe which we live in is itself by law of physics is like a, a neutron which splits into an electron and a proton and makes an atom this universe is created out of a split of another universe because the law of physics are continuous and similar in all dimensions so what they call a big bang theory is nothing but actually a big bang rubbish we are created through the same process this universe is created through the same process of splitting of a bigger more massive and in time when this universe cannot hold on to its magnetic field and gravitational field like exactly a neutron we will split two further universes with our two split masses so we are part of a chain of what we call unicos universe, universe of or universal in cosmos and in reality we can show the process and we are part of it and in a way if you understand the use of the a structure of uh, what we call principal matter and principal energy what they call dark matter and dark energy the way we use crossing the space of the universe is a matter of seconds to the human life in a very short time you are protected but this time for the first time when you have a planet like earth what gives this magnetic field and gravitational field is given at its birth it's constant it cannot change but with our systems we can change it so we can change the strength from matter to what they call transition matter or to what we call the principal matter strength so with a higher strength you can travel the space in a much faster at the same time with a full protection and with a gravitational field in the book I've explained in a very simple way that you say a matter what happens to me when I go into an antimatter environment or what you call what we call principal matter or what you call a dark energy and I we call it a transition energy in the book the structure of light I've explained that our body will change in time to the environment which is in which means when we go into the dimension of matter or dark matter or we call it transition matter or principal matter what you call antimatter because our cells are made of this and what we call principal matter in the center as it slows down in the strength and becomes a matter then in those environments the antimatter or principal matter will come forward so we keep the integrity of our existence as it is but instead of using our matter level we use our or our body will change to uh, its principal matter level. so in different dimension of the universe magnetic field 
different strength within our structure will come forward. And in a way, uh, Einstein says, uh, light is energy. In fact, this is nothing but a load of uh, nonsense. Because light is a plasma. It's exactly the way the structure of a neutron, a neutron or a proton or electron. The only difference is that for a plasma of neutron, for example, to travel from A to B in a space, if it, if it keeps its spherical shape as it is, it meets a lot of resistance. What it does as it tunes its magnetic field to point of its destination, wherever it could be, it becomes elongated. So, in fact, light is a plasma, but in an elongated shape, which in every environment which it goes through, it changes its cover, its jacket, according to its environment. When it's in the, a strong uh, principle environment, this principle field comes out because it loses less energy. There is less friction when you are the same 